Recently, I was talking to my nephew about doing a pegboard garage organization deal, and this is the photo he sent me from his work. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Ada Through Garage, and today we're, our, our project is to both insulate this wall, we're going to wire it, stick frame it, and then put the pegboards right on top of it. I'm just going to get right into it. Um, yeah, so let's go. So right across here we have some nails, some more nails, that kind of nonsense. We're going to get rid of this too. Um, just kind of clear all this off. So lots of... So we have cleared the wall. Now it's time to remove all the excess drywall insulation to see what kind of mess is behind here. I bet you there's no insulation. Typically that's what it is. It sounds hollow. This is fairly typical of a builder. No insulation value. So look who was right. Obviously, I already saw the video. I just wanted to say that. So that little outlet's going to be awesome because I'm going to run all the power going this way off of that. It is on its own breaker. So the four outlets I want to add. So like one, two, three, four. Uh, and then I also want to add two for the ceiling. So when I have the, this is for a project for later, when the, the garage door is up, I want to be able to uh, have light panels on the garage door. So if you're working on your car, the overhead lights, which are not there, obviously, you're looking at drywall. Um, the, uh, the car will not be, will be covering that, sorry, the car, the garage will be covering that, and then that way you can still go down. Um, obviously the hood will be in the way of that, but if you're working on underneath the hood and the hood is up, the lights are coming down and these lights are coming forward, even if you're under the car, you're still going to have full view and that way it works. Um, you can see that the air has been coming in through there and the homeowner previous to me use uh, the spray foam and stuff, which is pretty much useless anyways, but uh, like for this application. Um, so yeah, we're gonna put actual insulation in that and then we're gonna cover it with rigid foam, which will be glued against the wall. So top and bottom will all be sealed using PL glue, which you can um, put on the wall and that will be great for uh, adhesion of that foam. And then we put through the stick framing going across. So yeah. You've seen me rip down drywall. You've seen me rip down ceiling. Because I wanted to do this, and I wanted to run some power, and then over there, I need to do something else, can't remember. Wires are hanging down. Well, this is unprecedented. But I actually put drywall back up. Yes, this drywall I took down, I like to reuse stuff. But we're gonna mud that right now just to get this all sealed up. I am going to uh, dap going all the way across here, kind of, kind of seal that off, and then the insulation is going on top of this. I joke, but my entire garage needs major drywall reconstruction, and I will be getting to that later on. As you can see there, we started with the insulation. The saw is running in the back. I did a lot of my own work just by myself, so I don't have anybody to uh, grab the wood for me. So this is how I cut long pieces of lumber. You can use supporting jacks and or um, saw horses. It does help a lot, but in this case, it was just easier to pass it through it and grab it on the other side. Look at all that sawdust. Those can be used as shims, so I'll put them somewhere else. I'll cut them down a bit more and put them in a bucket, throw them in the shed. They're good enough. This I'll get cleaned up later. That is all the pieces for the stick framing. And this is where we're at. I wanted to give an example, because like this part of that, I can't really get a good video of this being so close to the car. I have this little bit of a shield in case anything gets thrown this way. So I don't dent it. I kind of push the, uh, what do you call it? The drill press into the car already today. I was not happy with that. It was a light push, but it touched it. And I'm like, ah! But it's, and it's, I know it's just a Trans Am. It, it's not really a big deal, but it's fine. And I like to, I like to keep it good. So anyways, this one is just sitting here. It's actually not even part of it. Um, I cut it for here, so I'm gonna put the next piece on. And then I've glued both the top and the bottom. Everything's all lagged into place. And I have it on 24 inch centers. So we have this from the pegboard is put on top of this. You'll see that later on in the video. And I start in the corner, coming all the way across here. And these are, so this is a half inch. And then this is three quarters. So that gives you about an inch and a quarter for the, uh, for the leg to pass through before it hits the concrete. There are two and a half. And then the bad part about all this, um, like over here, I'm not using the bit that came with this. Uh, if I can pull it out here, I'll show you why. 
Uh, oh, I'm not even sure where it is. Okay. The bit I'm using, this is the bit that came with it. You see, there's not much difference. However, this bit is thicker. It pretty much is the same size as the screw that I'm using to tap on. This one, as you can see right here, you can see the, uh, the grooves in the uh, drill bit. This one, you don't. Get back here, I'm trying to show you something. See the difference? So it's just a slight difference. So when I use this one, the one that came with the kit, these would just spin, they wouldn't grab. With this one, they grab, and that's mine. So I'm kind of mad about that because I was hoping to use theirs. Because, well, you pay, you pay 50 bucks for all those screws, you kind of want to use the hardware that comes with it. Anyways, I digress. That there is what it's going to look like beneath the, uh, the pegboard, which is over here. And then that means I can hang tools once I have this all said and done. To have everything organized, I can see it right away. I'm not looking where I put it, where I might have misput it, I don't know. But this is how we're going across all this. And the reason why I did this and didn't refilm it is because you really can't see it past the car, as I already said. Just want to reiterate that. This here was a test for the, uh, so you can even see I'm turning about from my hand. And it's just a little bit tight. And that's with this drill bit. But the other one, I couldn't do that. So you put a bit of wood in there, it'll be good temporarily. Um, I might actually put some plastic in there. That way it won't rot and be gone. That way I can still use that hole. But yeah, so now I'm gonna start cutting. I'm gonna spray foam around this a little bit here, fill that in. And I have some other stuff I want to spray foam over here on this corner. Lots of space there, lots of space at the bottom. I kind of just want to tighten all that up. I will eventually insulate this, as I said already. And this is the power, it's, it's shut off right now. This is the power that's gonna go across here for the four additional plugs. Don't know if I'm gonna get into that all tonight. And then when I put the plugs on the wall, um, these are only inch and a half, as I was saying, that's an inch and a quarter. The other quarter is from the pegboards over there, so that gives me the full inch and a half. So these will be flush. I'm just gonna put some plastic on the back of this and then bolt that to the wall using those tap cons like these. So yeah, that's the plan. Oh, this little update. Foam in the can does expire. The four cans I had, the four cans I had they were all from 2007, 2010, 2012. Apparently, I just kept it and I never took a step back. So I tried to fill this here, it didn't happen. Fill this, this is, which is what I wanted. Uh, filled that little corner piece, it will slowly expand. And then the last little bit before I just gave up on the cans was this piece here. So that's fine. Looks like butt, but hey, at least these gaps are filled. And then I'm gonna continue going across. So if you look at the bottom of the cans, I'll give you a date. I don't know what the date on this one is. Okay, I don't know on that one. This one here says 2010. It's rock solid, like doesn't even move. I broke the thing off. And the other one I can read is this one, 2007. So yeah, don't keep old stuff. In this portion of the video, I just wanted to show you guys now that you can actually see it, how to Put up the styrofoam, which you glue behind it. You don't have to use a lot of glue just to hold it in place, and it kind of gives it a seal top and bottom. And then as you go, you stick frame it so everything gets held and it is fastened firmly into place at the appropriate spacing. All right, so we finished for the night. That rhymed. Did not intend to do that. So we are 24 centers, and every four feet we have a sheet. Um, typically, this is how I would, um, what do you call it? stick frame a wall, but mine would be 16 inch centers. So it'd probably be right about there. So they got that 14 and a half in between. And then in this area, if I wasn't gonna put pegboard, which is that stuff over there, um, I would fill this with another layer of um, rigid foam. And that way it would fill the entire cavity. The beauty of doing it this way is I don't have to have anything behind the stud like plastic or whatever. And I've also peeled everything all the way around it so it's completely sealed so nothing can get behind it. Now what I do when I glue this stuff is I have a nice little roller. And I don't know if I show you guys in the middle of the video or the beginning of the video. That's how I roll it out. So uh, that goes over the entire uh, sheet. Which gives you the best contact 
for the PL glue. Um, I didn't do it from this point on because I was, uh, instead of just, try, um, what do you call it, insulating everything and then stopping, I decided to insulate a little bit, then do the stick frame, insulate a little bit, finish off the stick frame, and that way the glue was always wet. Um, next thing, everything turned out really good. Um, I got the uh, the boxes at four feet, so it'll be box there, box there, box there, and that'll be at this height here approximately. They'll be pointed off of this one. This one has a dedicated uh, breaker in the uh, the far side of the house, so I'm okay with that. That's dead right now. Um, and then if I have time, the idea is to put an outlet there and an outlet there because I'm debating, and this is kind of crazy, but I wanted to put some LED lights, some strips this way, and then whatever door, if it's if, if I want to plug it in, I just have the, it be the uh, the pigtail be dangling down. I just plug it in up top there, and then I've got light. And then if I had the door all the way up, because I plan on putting lights here, uh, if you want air or whatever, or anything like that nature, um, you have the lights above you, and then they can come down when you're working on your car. The beauty of this also is if you had the lights here, and if you're working underneath the car, the car, say the car is lifted up a little bit, you'd have these lights here beaming forward, and you'd be able to see. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm 35 years old, scary to say that. My eyes aren't as good as they used to be. So with that respect, even though my eyes aren't as good as they used to be, it's nice just to have all the light possible. You can always turn them off, you can always not use them, but there's sometimes where you're just in a deep dark space underneath your car, stuck in a corner all scrunched up, turn on the lights like that will make the difference between getting the job done, being frustrated, or getting the job done being like, oh, that's where the part is, that's where the damage is, or that's where that is, oh, I didn't see that. All that kind of nonsense. So going forward down here, um, this is the open cavity, typically uh, in an unfinished portion or unoccupied part of the house they just leave this open i don't know why they do it but they do it would have been easy for them just to drop some insulation in here and be done with it they very to get it done um, typically they don't favor your garage as you can see in the drywall right there i would personally i would soundproof it vapor barrier it um resilient channel so you don't have the extra um sound transfer for the acoustic noise and the more times you have your acoustic noise change, like a uh, transfer for, let's say it hits the drywall, which I would have five eighths instead of half inch, this is half inch. And um, it would go to the drywall, then it would go to the screws as it transfers through, it would hit the resilient channel, and it would travel along another eight inches or so until it has the faster hits to studs, or the joists, sorry. Um, and then you'd have the, uh, the rock saw, the sound deadening uh, insulation, in the, uh, in the floor to stop the reverberation and then it goes up to the final floor and, and then the finished floor. Um, so that's a lot of transfer, a lot of sound deadening, and it does wonders. Um, that going, the going forward, I'm not gonna do that. I really wanted to, that's why I started ripping this down as I needed to. And I'm like, you know, it's a lot of bloody work. For this place, if I am gonna do any kind of sound deadening, I'll take everything down, I'll put five inch drywall right on top, I'll glue it and then tape it and then done. Um, so this year, I'm gonna work on this tomorrow. Cut a few pieces of wood, fur this out a little bit, put actual insulation in here, vapor barrier this particular little area. It's like a one-off kind of deal. And then we're gonna start using the pegboard, which is right over here, waiting to be installed. So I'm gonna cut it to size, and then I'll prime it and paint it. And then we'll put it up. So it's ready to go. While that's drying, I'll be doing the electrical work, getting all this ready up. So if I have enough time, I'll do those two outlets right across here. And basically, since the joists run this way, I, in theory, all I have to do is point it off of here, go up and do the first one. So I'll have to drill a hole here and then cut a hole here and then hopefully be able to reach it really easily. I'm sure the power comes through all these joists across here. So I'll be able to see where that is and just cut a little hole. And then I'll mount the box right here, box right over there. And then boom, we've got that done. For the lights when you have them up covering the other lights i want to put pot lights in here um might do six here six over there and then i'll copy that over to the other two spaces on the other side there and then i'm going to have two um other lights the you know the fancy ones they have that have the three things or the four things that are all led and they go in your typical uh, sockets for the old condescent bulbs because this garage has two um my garage openers are also led 
so everything is bright and tight yes i wanted that to rhyme um so yeah there's lots to do i hopefully get it all done for tomorrow i did go on to amazon and grab some uh pegboard um drop in or whatever for 40 bucks he got 208 pieces and i'm like that's a daggone good deal i'm gonna do it so i'm tired i'm done babbling my arm is sore i just want to chill grab a shower and then uh, relax fall asleep and get this back to uh get working on this tomorrow um, i was hoping to have all this done so i apologize guys anyways if you like what i do here guys if any questions comments concerns leave them all down below and i'll get back to you as soon as i can if you were to do a basement this is how you do it just before i go if you have the, uh, the wood in this place, you could get the blue wood or you can use this wood. It's not really that big a deal to me. Um, the blue wood is just uh, for what might be damp locations. If you're in a garage, typically this area is not that damp. It's a raised bungalow and whatnot. Um, so the blue wood is anti-mold uh, for damp areas, as I said. And when I uh, put this up, this is kind of spacing. 16 centers, I was doing to do a basement. This is for the pegboard specific application specific i should say and that way you have the space to put the pegs in and whatnot um the rigid foam acts as a barrier for the wood so it won't rot and uh even with the blue wood it's probably better oh actually it is better let's be honest and um again if i was going to do this in a basement i would you get the extra rigid foam fill in this uh, barrier because this has an R value of five. The cheaper foam that I was looking at had an R value of less than three. So I went with this. It was inconsequential in price. So if I was to double this up, you'd have uh, an R value of 10. I believe uh, bats, insulation bats are an R value of around 13. Um, wood has an R value. Even air that's stagnant has an R value. I think it's out of one or something like that is inconsequential. But just before I digress, and then even uh, when you vapor air your stuff, which you could do that for this, it's a little excessive, just to make sure there's no air transfer, which again, when you have air transfer, that's where you lose heat. And I've been trying to like fill in all the stuff with the foam. I had some extra foam, but apparently it's been sitting too long, as I said earlier in the video. And then we're gonna go around sealing all this stuff once more to make sure this is 100%, or at least good as possible. It's a garage after all, and even doing any kind of performance enhancements for not losing heat you're winning and i did a lot down here so that helps out a bit i actually fixed the garage doors a little bit so they're good and yeah just you know as long as the wheels turn and you're improving that's a that's a bonus and i'm done babbling so i'm gonna get going catch you all in the next one as i always peace